But no, death row essentially is uh, you're in a cell, mm -hmm. locked up 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he showers every what day or two or every, you know however many. But you just you in your cell mm -hmm. all day. You get a, probably an hour of recreation every you know couple of days where you go out and uh, you in a cage or whatever working out or mm -hmm. you could you know shoot some hoops. Um, but yeah, like you you're not in general population at all. So you're technically in uh, seclusion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 24 hours a day lockdown. It's you your cell. Um, your, your little cot, you know, you got a TV in there. You know, I just it's not like I've ever seen it, but just based off what he's yeah. explaining to me. Mm -hmm. So he's locked up, you know, they bring him all of his meals and you know, pretty much the only time you get to go out is to shower, to wreck, and then when somebody drive up and visit him. So he up in San Quentin, which is like, you know, one of the, wow, the most, yeah, one of like the most notorious um, prisons. But honestly, I think out of all the cases on death row, which is like 700 plus, mm -hmm. he probably has like, the weakest like case to where like like we about to get some bread and we about to figure this out because he mm -hmm. has the weakest case on death row as far as like a conviction yeah, you feel yeah, me yeah. This is, so you went to summit high school right i went to summit for about i went there all of my freshman year and then probably like six weeks like a month of my sophomore year yeah okay okay so then you, you ended up going where back to i went to john yeah i went to john Muir high in pasadena Okay, so we probably played you. We played you guys in passing league yeah, uh, a yeah. couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> you said some so, fights yeah. job here. Y'all yeah. should be fast as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got a bunch of bunch of athletes, man, missing the interior guys. But yeah, no, nah, I went to John Muir High. Uh, I went to Summit. You know, played a little. I played quarterback there, and then when I when I went to Muir, uh, we had a quarterback, and I was an athlete, so they was kind of like make that transition to receiver. So okay. make that transition. So you say you started getting into the streets when you got into high school a little bit. Yeah, when I when I got when I got back to Mir, so I initially moved with one of my friends, uh, one of my good friends. I moved with his grandma, and she kind of like set up shop and was like, you know, here go a room, here go this, here go that. Like you good, you got clothes, you got food. Like you know, like really really thankful for her because she did something she didn't have to do. While my mom, my mom was out of jail, but she was getting herself together. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Uh -huh. So I lived with her. Um, but it was like it wasn't like I was really being checked up on. Like she knew I was taking care. Like she kind of expected me to like low key be a man. Like okay, you could you could live with me, but you gotta walk to school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta make sure your grades is right. You gotta do all this. Like like I'm not like she's an older lady, so I didn't expect her to. You know what I'm saying? But I took that as an opportunity to go to go run the streets and do whatever yeah, I wanted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. I had this English class. I was I was a sophomore. And I was I was lucky enough to go see Obama at the inauguration. Like I was selected as like one of thirty kids really? in like the LA area. We took a bus from LA to DC, and uh, that's powerful. And and my English teacher said, you know, you're gonna miss probably a week or two of school because you know we took a bus to DC. Mm -hmm. So he said, I just want you to write down a journal every single day, and you know I'm a I'm a suffice for what you miss. You know with your journal, I need you to write down your journey every day. Just write down one page mm -hmm. about you know what you want to do. I'm on a bus worried about girls, yeah. I'm worried about this, oh, you from that section, you ain't from my section, who is you, you yeah. know, we, we was on the bus with dudes from Crenshaw High, dudes from Dorsey High, you know what I'm saying, maybe not on no gangbanging tip, but like affiliate, so I'm, yeah, I'm worried about, like, I'm worried yeah, about yeah. the wrong things, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, and I came back, and my, my, my teacher was like, where you, yeah. and I didn't have a page to oh, give him. Like I could have got home because we got home on a Saturday. I could have got home yeah, and like kind of remembered it. You know what I'm saying? It was only like we was gone for like nine days, so it was only like nine pages. That's nothing. You can write out. Yeah. Nine. But I wasn't even thinking like that. So um, my sophomore year, man, horrible, man. Like really, really bad grade. So I say that to say I didn't have nothing to turn into him, and he failed me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm not at the at that time. I'm not really understanding the importance of education and and recruitment and all like I said I don't got nobody to explain like yeah, I'm literally I, I, mine was written out for you, you know, know what I'm saying on my own we don't have no counselors to tell us hey you got to do this these are the A through G requirements and this is what you need to get to where and clearinghouse mm -hmm. what's that you know what I'm saying yeah. like so um me and my cousin Shawnee Mac uh, he lived in LA on 107th and Hoover so he lived like in between, like it was a street that separated two gangs. Like where he lived at, he lived. Mm -hmm. He lived. He was from L.A. Lanes, and where where he lived at on the other side, it was the opposite. It was like a rival, a rival side of gang members. So, like me living with my friend's grandma, 
but I will always be at his crib. So essentially, I live there. Like, I yeah. live with my friend's grandma, but I was always there. So, like, I'm walking to the store. I'm getting banged on left and right. Yeah. It's two It's two liquor stores on the, on the corner. Like, you got to kind of mm-hmm. choose up. And naturally, my section where I'm from is all bloods there. You know what I'm saying? And my cousin was a blood. So I'm like, I'm not about to, you know what I'm saying, yeah. even communicate or chill with, with no guys like that was crib. So um, I start hanging out with my cousin. And um, we kind of, like, we kind of like like everywhere you go in LA, it's a little different. Cause like yeah. you you walking down the street and and you know from your hat to your socks to your shoes, yeah, like what color is your laces? Like where you from? Mm-hmm. You feel me? So um, I was running with him and and, and we was caught up with the, some of the wrong guys. But um, I had this one gang member particularly. I'm talking about like we was we was like at the trap house every night with like cameras, like bando boarded up. Like we was in some, you know what I'm saying? And like most people don't know this and I don't really talk about it cause it ain't nothing to really brag yeah, about. Ain't nothing to brag you know about what here. I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that's not cool. That's not like, so we was, we was in, we was like in it deep, but I wasn't an official gang member. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just I'm just an affiliate. Do, yeah. But at the same time, like I'm, I'm not trying to go to the dude. store and get knocked off either by this side. So I gotta, I gotta hang with this side. You know what I'm saying? And see, that's what a lot of people, not to cut you off, but that's what a lot of people don't understand about gang mem- yeah. uh, banging is a lot of people, they're in a way forced to be in a gang because of, of your own protection. Yeah. You had to choose. Like yeah. either, I'm either going to be over here uh, messing with them, and then my cousin and my people gonna be ma- gonna be mad, or yeah. I gotta de- deal with them because they gonna be messing with me. Since now I'm affiliated with them, now they gonna try to be trying yeah. to attack me. Like yeah. people don't understand that. Like, so why would you gang bang? Like, man, sometimes it's just that's just how life, your environment, yeah. how it be. And ev- and everybody don't don't got that person to, to say, hey, stop, hey, hey don't do, do that, that. Mm-hmm. hey, don't do this. So, um, so yeah, man. So running around with him, uh, you know, and then running around with with a crew back home, I. I did some stuff I'm really not proud of and, you know, uh, got into some trouble. Nothing like really substantially major. Mm -hmm. It could have been, you know what I'm saying? But nothing major to where, um, you know, like I had to go to jail or anything like that. So I I like really when I sit back and I look at it, I'm like, bro, I'm I'm blessed because it could have went the other way. So I say that to say me and my cousin who I was hanging around with every day, like we riding a bike to to the train station to the blue line and and uh, like we getting banged on, you feel me? Yeah. I'm I'm on the pegs, or I'm riding, he on the pegs, and we see two dudes coming up, like they automatically, where y'all from? Blah, 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 you yeah. know what I'm saying? So like it was just a natural part of the environment. Um, but like I, I really, I messed up. Like my whole sophomore year, I was like, I did bad, bro. I think my GPA was like zero point, whatever it was. Yeah. But you ended up so, turning around. I ended up turning around. So let's so, talk about that. You yeah, turn around, end up turning around. getting a scholarship. Uh, yeah. So what, what initially made you turn around though? Like, like what was that? Like, I gotta get this shit together. So, um, first of all, I wanted to play football. All my mm-hmm. friends played football. Yeah. So I wanted to play football, and then, um, so I think like my junior year. So like our OC, our offensive coordinator was pretty much our head coach. You know what I'm saying? Our head coach is like a kickback guy. He like y'all. He let the OC and the DC run their thing. He just the head guy. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So my OC was my head coach, and like I was a sophomore going to going to uh, going into my junior year, and like these coaches is coming by. He like, yeah, I got a playmaker, I receiver, <laughs> and then they'll slide the transcripts and be like, oh, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. You so know, you start can, noticing well, that. I, I start noticing that, and then I had a teacher um, named Mr. Rustin, who was a young guy. Um, African American male who kind of just kind of was like seeing what path I was going down and kind of like mm-hmm. grabbed me, talked to me, guided me like, hey man, listen, I can I can help you out if you want to be helped. Yeah, but let me cut you off again. And this is this is perspective, and this is why I want to do things like this, mm-hmm. man. Because when I was in eighth grade, I got kicked off of my basketball team because of grades, mm-hmm. right? And so that embarrassment right there was like, damn, like, yeah. you know. But at that same time, that's when my brother started getting recruited by Northwestern, actually. Okay. And so Northwestern are high academic school. And there so my brother didn't have bad grades. He was clear. He was good. But Northwestern took their scholarship because they're like a Stanford-type school. Yeah, So his nice. grades weren't up there. They took that scholarship. So I seen that. And I seen that I just got kicked out of my my uh, junior high. Yeah. I knew at that moment. That was when I was like, I can't play around with grades. Yeah. You know? And so that's when then it was like, grades is nothing. Just grades pay attention. Yeah, work hard. Do good. Just do it. So that so African dude, he took he took you in. And uh, he was uh, he was my history teacher. And he just kind of was like, like just gave me the game on like, man, if you want to go to college, you want to be better than your situation. Um, you know, like, 
you gotta really grind, you gotta focus, you gotta stop hanging out, you gotta do what really, what really matters. Like you don't see it right now, but yeah. like in five, 10 years, you're gonna see. So almost being 10 years out of high school, <laughs> um, it's coming up on us, you know what I'm saying? Creeping at the For door. Real? <laughs> we is, uh, <laughs> we getting old, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. We got to have a 10 year reunion. Yeah, man, we, we, we creeping. Uh, so he was just kind of like, just gave me game. And then, so my friend, whose grandma that I live with, mm -hmm. her husband, rest in peace, his brother, which is my my uh, my my friend's uncle, was a another history teacher there. His name is Mr. Harrison, and he's um, he's my uncle's godfather, and he's been in my life for a long time. And he was just like, you know, Carl, like he he wasn't like, yo, you better do this or something gonna happen to you. He was like, man, I'm letting you know if you want if you want help in life and you want to get to where you want to go, you see your parents, you see what road they went down, like you know, I'm here for you. But if you don't want help, you know what I'm saying, go ahead, yeah, you found the drizzle. Yeah. So I had Mr. Harrison. Mr. Rustin and Mr. Bynum. Bynum and Rustin, I mean, Bynum and Harrison was our OGs on campus. So they was there for like, at top for like so many years. And mm -hmm. those three guys like really molded me into the guys who I was today. And my coach Antoine, it was just like, 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 man, like you, like you talented, like you can go D1 like that. You know, that was the goal, like the go D1. And I seen a lot of guys ahead of me, like really, really good guys didn't go, not because of talent. Like I know some guys who should be playing on Sundays. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like. I personally don't believe I was good enough to play on some days, and I'm okay with that. Like, yeah, most see, athletes I'm ain't cool. okay with that. I'm cool with, I'm cool with that. Like, I'm, <laughs> cool with I'm, I'm, I'm 100 percent People ask fine. me why, like, when I tell people I used to play football, they be like, well, why, 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 why did you try the NFL? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I did. I'm just not good enough. Yeah. And they be like, <laughs> like, well, like, you know what I'm saying? You got to be real with yourself. <laughs> I'm not like, good enough. I'm just not good enough. But, um, so yeah, so I ended up turning it around, man, ended up being an honor roll student, you know, man. hopped on the honor roll, and that, and, that, and that really made my mom proud, man, and I, uh, so like recruiting was crazy for me because like I said I had those bad set of Let me grades. Cut you off again because don't it feel good? Because again I, I got into honor roll like school yeah. was easy to me. People uh -huh. look at me as like a knowledgeable type. Yeah. Of How good does it make you feel, man, that you went from like being the dude who couldn't get an A, a B, a yeah. C, to now you you are an honorable student? I mean initially it was just like okay I'm doing this to play football, but then once I seen that it really mattered, it, it really felt good, and I it seen what good. I seen what it did to my mom. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because like. With my mom and her situation and my pops and his situation, like, I ain't, I ain't supposed to be here. Yeah. I ain't supposed to graduate. I ain't mm -hmm. supposed to do none of that. So when I seen that, it was just like, damn. And then also, I got a, I got a little brother and a little sister. My little brother just graduated from college. You know what I'm saying? And my little sister, she's always been a great student. Um, and they follow them. They like they yeah. really paying attention. Watch, like you don't really think. They watch. But they like I watch my brothers every step. They like my little brother. Like literally, if I if I got up right now and my little brother sat down in his chair. And like you'll be like, damn, is that little Carl? Like, <laughs> That's Carl. People be like, they can't tell the difference between us on the phone. Like we walk a lot, we talk a lot. Like you know, we we got some differences, but like he 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 modeled his image yeah. off of me. You know, he is who he is. Yeah. But he looked yeah. up to his big bro. You know That's what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, man. So that was that was that was very very like heartwarming, and just to see the impact yeah. it had on my family. It's like it's bigger than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The impact it had on my mom and them. So and it also gave my my little brother was always smart though. He never had no problems with school. So. He that took him an extra mile. Like if Carl could do this, then yeah, I could do this. Type, do you know what I'm saying? That's what's up. So yeah, man. But no, I ended up uh, getting a scholarship to uh, Arizona State, and it was crazy because I had I wasn't highly recruited. I had a couple of schools that was all uh, after me. I I was going to go to Colorado State initially, um, but I really was like I felt like I was better than Colorado yeah, State. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not even gonna try to because the camera Montana, Montana offered me. I was the same way. Like man, people like, like, going to Oregon. I'm like. I'm going to Montana. Yeah, like I kind of felt like I was better than that. You know what I'm saying? And, and my boy Akeem, like he was like, he went to a, a big high school like Alamany that were like really yeah. big and like he was he was highly recruited. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, like not to say like he, he played O line, so like I'm not even comparing like me versus him, yeah, but I'm yeah. just saying like well, know. he I'm getting like, recruited. I, I want that same. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah. But. He took care of business. I didn't take care of business in the classroom. So it was easy for schools to walk in and see him like, oh, he this high, he this, okay, he check all the boxes. Yeah. He got D1 film, he got D1 size, and he got the grades to go D1. Okay, here's the offer. Yeah. Okay, Carl, you got D1 size, you got D1 film, but your grades ain't D1. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't highly recruited. So on signing day, I didn't sign. I thought like on signing day, you had to sign, but oh, that yeah. was just like the start of the signing mm -hmm. period. So once my head coach, Twan, he broke that down to me. That, you know. So I kind of was like, ah, oh, I got the newspaper guys hitting me up asking me you know uh we good 
uh, I got the newspaper guys, you know, asking me like, uh, you know, like, where you going? Where you signing? You know, big recruiting. I mean, like, I was I was big for who I was in my area, but as yeah. far as like colleges goes, I wasn't that big of a recruit. So um, I'm like, I don't know. I got Colorado State. I got some other schools. I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, and then like maybe a week after signing day, I'm, I'm, I'll never forget this day. I'm, I'm leaving home. I mean, I'm leaving school, about to go home and grab my stuff for track practice because I didn't live too far away. And you know. Coach Twan called me, say, Carl, I said, what's up? He's like, what you doing? I'm like, about to go get my stuff, head to track practice. He like, I need you to stop, go back into the office, get your transcripts and fax them to ASU. And I'm like, ASU? He like, yeah, Arizona State. He like, Coach Erickson just called me, the head coach, and he said they want to offer you. Mm -hmm. So I'm like. Because Bashar was up there, too. Yeah, Bashar was Mm -hmm. up there. So I'm like, for real? He like, yeah, he said they want to pull the trigger on you. So um, initially what happened with that is, they end up thinking that they was going to get two or three receivers in their class, and then on signing day, some dudes flipped, mm-hmm. which was great for me because it opened an opportunity for mm-hmm. me. So they had, like, two or three extra scholarships. So YouTube, mm-hmm. they were, like, head coaches on YouTube you know, was looking at one of my teammates, Kevon Seymour, who's a professional now. He went to Mir with me. Seymour. Kevon. Where you go? Where he you went go? to USC. Play okay, corner. Yeah, I knew something wrong. I knew so, I knew the name. When I heard so it. he was looking at – I believe he was looking at his film, and uh, – you know, in the in that bar next and say like you know preferred highlights or if you watch the oh, video yeah, on yeah, Nipsey yeah. like right there yeah, on YouTube yeah. it'll show you like next video so really? he clicked me like class of 2011 da 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 like mm-hmm. so he watched my film and he like he made the call you know what I'm saying wow. so yeah so that's how it happened and then and it ended up being me Kevon and our running back Tyron like all three of us got offered on the same day really? you feel me so like he called and was like we on a dead period but you know I want to get you up here. On a trip and da, 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 da. I'm like, this Pac-12, this is a no-brainer. Like, I'm Sign there, up, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's crazy. It's crazy because UCLA got in the mix really late in my recruiting. So when I took my trip to ASU, you know, they showed me a wonderful time. And Coach Erickson, a stand-up guy, and if anybody who really knows college football knows, yeah. Erickson is like one of those guys. Yeah, he won yeah. the he recruited my like, brother, and so I, I know about Erickson. Yeah, but they so, recruited me too, though. Yeah, I showed up, and you know, they had dinner and they had the players there, and. and they had these, uh, you know, Erickson had his Miami, his, his, his championship <laughs> rings on. And, you know, I'm at dinner. I'm just blessed to be here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? My mom came out with me. She, you know, we got these fancy restaurants. You know how they do. Yeah. They wine and dine you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we stand in the hotel suite. Like, I'm thinking, like, me and my mom about to stay in the same room. They're like, man, we got your mom on the other side <laughs> of the chilling. building. She on her own. Like, she on her own. Like, they telling her, like, run it up, room service. Like, whatever you want to do, Miss Martin, you go do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... Um, so yeah, I ended up taking a trip down there and I know that UCLA had got involved, but academically, I kind of figured like I was on the fence. So when ASU offered me the Scully and they wanted me to commit and sign, I was like, nah, like I'm going to hold off. Mm-hmm. Like, so then Erickson called my head coach and was like, I mean, uh, my OC and was like, man, I got, a, uh, I got Carl, uh, right here. And like, we offered him a full ride and he like trying to yeah, play, yeah, like yeah. trying to play with us. So I was just like, you know what? I ended up talking to my mom and I was like. My mom really didn't understand the importance of recruiting or not, but she's she could really read people. That's one thing my mom is good at, like really, really good. Like Carl, that girl, she no good for you. Yeah. Cut her off, uh-huh. type. Uh-huh. So uh, she was like, "I like Dennis Erickson as a person. Yeah. Like f football as a person, he's a good dude, and I feel like if you leave and you go with him, you're gonna be good." No matter what. So I ended up signing the ASU. It was a no brainer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. UCLA came in way too late. By that time, I had already signed and did all my paperwork. Oh, I know you look tight. Yeah, I know you look uh, tight. Uh, yeah, because, you know, the Rose Bowl right there. It's right yeah, down the street. I'm, I'm going to pass it yeah, in. Yeah, that's, that's, home. That's, that's home. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but no, nah, ASU was cool because I ended up going there and, and learning some really, really valuable lessons in it. And uh, really connecting with some really cool guys that are still my friends to this day, and I, you know, I find myself going to Arizona to go hang out with them and learn different things from them. Yeah, Arizona, my spot. My yeah. brother just moved out there. My yeah. best friend, uh, my roommate in college, live out there. I'm yeah. trying to buy some property out there. Man, Arizona's it's spot. up. It's on the up and up, bro. So yeah, so yeah, I end up, uh, I end up going to ASU and uh, signing to ASU, and it's crazy. Like I, I was telling you, like my mom is so much of a hustler, and she sacrificed so much for us to have. Like you, like you were telling me earlier, how like your parents really, they like y'all wasn't the best family out there, but you know they they did what they had to do to make sure you and your siblings were straight. And I seen my mom like they like, like you good, but um, you need to take a class online. For some requirement or something that I needed to make up. Yeah. 
And like they like, okay, you take this class, and it's like eight hundred. I'm looking around like that. Hey, but this like, is before you went to ASU. This is before you have I to went take to ASU. Class to, make sure you can get to, ASU. to get to ASU. Mm-hmm. So this is like after I get back off my recruiting trip. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, like, hey, honey, like, where am I get that? Yeah, eight hundred dollars from him. like. So my mom's <laughs> being a woman that she is. The, <laughs> It was understood, no need to explain it. And but ultimately I found out that she took half of the rent money and was like, pay for your class, you're going to college. Mm-hmm. I can get evicted, I don't care. Yeah. Like you're going to, I can find somewhere else to live. Like mm-hmm. this like she always preached the importance of education and it's crazy. And I was supposed to tell you this earlier, I forgot. And uh I've been wanting I've been wanting to share this. My mom used to you know, she used to really be hard on us about academics. And she used to say, you know, when I was in school, I was just, you always hear people say, when I was this, yeah. when, back then when I was this. So one day, uh, my mom used to say, like, I used to get straight A's. Da, da, da. I'm like, man, you've been in jail, man. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. You don't know about no straight A's. One day we go to the grocery store and we hit the corner of the aisle and one of my mom's old teachers is there. And she remember my mom like it was yesterday. She says, yeah. what the? My mom says, hey, hi, miss, whatever her name was. And she, uh. You know, she said, is this your son? She's like, yeah, this is my, this is my second oldest. This is Carl or whatever. You know, I introduced myself. And uh, she asked me what grade I was in, whatever, whatever. So then she said, I'm going to tell you one thing before I let you go. She said, your mom was the best student I ever had. She really? did all her work. She got all A's. She, I was like, damn. So just to think, like, that resentment just based on, you know, when somebody go to jail, people yeah. already got that negative stigma negative about them, not even knowing the situation. So when I seen that, I was just like, damn. So my mom, she like kind of like really sacrificed and she was like big on us. And she used to read to us and stuff. So she was like really important. Like yeah. we was in the hood, but like she was like, nah, I don't got this hood mindset. Like I'm going a, I'm to a grind for y'all. I'm going to get it, but I want y'all to have something yeah. better. So, yeah. yeah but well, you know when they, when they use the term, be a man of understanding. A lot of people don't know they just use the term. Yeah. I feel like you a man of understanding, bro. Like yeah. you understand situations. You understand like... I can't judge you on this situation. You did mess up. You made that mistake. And probably because you, you, you alluded to, you made some mistakes. Made I some made some mistakes, mistakes in yeah. my life, too, where it's like, look, that don't represent who I am. Yeah, like, don't, you know don't what judge saying? me based off that. Yeah, that's you not, know what that's, not, that's not even fair. Like, if I took the worst thing you ever did in life and I slapped that on you and you had that yeah. sticker on you for the rest of your life, that's not fair at all. Yeah, man, you know? be a man of understanding. Yeah. So, but you eventually leave ASU. Yes. You transfer because... Uh, oh, we got a coaching change. So, after my freshman year, Erickson got fired. And that's when, what's the name came in? Coach oh. Graham, Todd Graham. Yeah, yeah. So, Erickson was like... He was a cool, he was a, what they call a player's coach. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, chill. We got the music at practice, you know what I'm saying? We got tour days and, like, can we just go and just helmets? Yeah. And, like, he like, okay, whatever the team wants. Like, he about business, but he wants his players to have fun. And he mm-hmm. like, you only get four to five years here. Let's have fun. It's a business, but I want to make sure y'all y'all good, too. Mm-hmm. Then they flipped the script. They brought a, they brought a, a, a military guy in to say, like, uh, Coach Graham. And he came in and was just like, you do as I say, you walk as I say, you talk as I say, you eat what I say, eat. And if you don't do that, then you out of here. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and my biggest thing was like, it's not about football with me because like I said, even though I was good at it and I played it and it ultimately, it ultimately got me to college, like I wanted to like, okay, if I played in college, of course I want to go to the yeah, NFL. Yeah. But that wasn't really what I really, Same really wanted to do. Same I'm going to take you back to Mr. Rustin, the teacher that, that yeah. grabbed me and told me he could help me. And his, and his class, like maybe, you know, like two or three weeks into his class, he has us right. Where do you see yourself in 10 years and what do you want to be? And it's crazy because he wrote me on Twitter probably like two or three years ago. I got his number. We t- text all the time. He said, hey, I got this, I got this letter you wrote on, on what you want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and he sent it to me. And basically it was saying like, I don't want to be like my moms and pops in and out of jail, you know, having their kids worry about what's going to happen next. Um, but I, I want to go to college, get a scholarship to college, which I did that, check that off the mm-hmm. list. Uh, I want to go and be an agent. That's always been my goal. Mm-hmm. My goal was my goal was to be an agent. So, uh, so like at ASU, it wasn't about oh you're not playing. Like mm-hmm. most people think, oh it's you not playing. And most people think I got kicked out of ASU. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. That's the stuff, cause that's the thing about the hood. They they very negative. Like they when they see you, they'll be cool with you. Well, I want to bring this up real quick because. When you say when you have in your letter, one of the things you put in your letter, you want to be in and out of, in, in and out of jail. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm a sociology major. And from a sociological standpoint, 
like a lot of people in our hoods and our pe our people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We don't aspire to be certain things because one, we don't see people. You know when they yeah. say you don't see people, you can't get to that. You know, yeah. you can't even have that vision. Yeah. A lot of my counterparts, their ten year thing would be owning this, owning that, yeah. being in this position, having this job, having this career, like like this is automatic. This is yeah. gonna happen for this us. This is gonna happen. Your thought process because of what you seen was I wanna be make sure I'm just not in and out of not in and, and out of I'm good. And I'm and good. I'm good. I you feel know? like I'm winning. You know what I'm saying? And that will limit you to that's all you gonna do. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm in that hood, I'm good. You I'm know what I'm saying? I just wanted to add that nugget in. Yeah, you no, know no, 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 no. You know? So yeah, um, so it wasn't it was never about football for mm -hmm. me. And you know, I did like I went to school, like I'm like if I'm not gonna play, it's, it's gonna be because of my ability. Yeah. It's not gonna be because I don't got good grades. Mm -hmm. I never felt I never felt a drug oh, I test. Yeah, I never, hard, I never right. like I didn't work hard. Like, I, like I was, I was like working hard. Like it's crazy. Me and my friend DJ, he played running back for the Cardinals. I was just at his house last week. He said, Carl, you know what? He said, man, I ain't never seen a player that busts his ass so hard in a classroom in practice. He said, I remember you used to catch balls in practice, and I swear, I swear to God. I saw Jerry Rice say he used to catch balls and go to the house in practice. Like mm -hmm. catch a catch a, catch a slant, and normally you know you'll throw it back, jog back in line, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm catching everything and going to the crib. Mm -hmm. You feel me? In yeah, practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they used to be mad at me for that, but I'm like, man, I'm trying to practice for how I want to play. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it was never about football for me. It was like more mm -hmm. like this this guy, Coach Graham, came in and he just he wasn't who he said he was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he was just, he was fake. Mm -hmm. And he didn't genuinely care about me. He didn't mm -hmm. care about, and like, and, unless you're making him money, unless you yeah. were a player on the field, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't know my name. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I was just like, it's not about football. It's about me being in an environment where I can learn and, you know, and also, you know, be cool and have fun. So decided to go back to uh, come back. Now, actually, when I left, I went to Arizona Western, mm -hmm. which is like one of the top JUCOs. JC, I think. It, okay, yeah. yeah, so when I left, I went to Arizona Western. And I got in some trouble there, you know. Mm -hmm. I got arrested. Um, I end up, you know, beating the case. It was something that, you know, it was like, it was something that really didn't have nothing to do with me. You feel me? Yeah. But I still went to jail for it. And uh, they end up dropping the case or whatever. But I got kicked out of that school. I got kicked out of JUCO. So most people, this is what most people they get my story confused. AZ, they think I got kicked out of ASU. That's not what happened. Mm -hmm. I left ASU on my own. Well, I could have stayed there, graduated, and you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, been a part of the team that want to pack yourself and all that. No, I went to JUCO in Arizona, AZ Western, and mm -hmm. that's when I got in trouble. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When I left ASU, yeah. and then I came back home. I went to Mount Sac, which is out in that area that, mm -hmm. that you, you know, you from. I went there, uh, committed to the University of Illinois, but uh, that 40, 60, 80 rule came back to affect me. So and I went it, That actually hit Jamal. I did an interview with Jamal last week, and uh -huh. that hit Jamal too. When he came back from his, wherever he went to Western yeah. State, came back with our San Bernardino City okay, College. Okay, yeah, City College. The same thing, because he got offered to Montana, Yeah. but then he wasn't able to come that fall because he that, that rule. That and rule. So he had to wait another year for him to finish to, up whatever class. Yeah, whatever. so yeah. a lot of people don't know that. So being a 4 2 four transfer, which is I started off at a four-year Arizona State. Now I'm at a two-year Mount Sac, and I want to go back to a four-year. Mm -hmm. I got to have like... 50 something or 60 percent of my degree complete i didn't even have a major when i was at yeah, age i was just taking yeah. basic classes and these coaches and counselors they're not telling me they don't really yeah. care sign him up for classes you know do whatever yeah, sure so i couldn't go to the university of illinois i didn't want to go back to juco for another year i didn't really like that i'm coming from d1 i'm coming from yeah. you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. a, 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 a pack five pack 12 school so mm -hmm. i was just like what's next d1 AA or the best d2 school so grand valley state in michigan which is like a total culture shock. They started recruiting me. They flew me out, and on top of not only being in Valley State, not being yeah. When did you graduate? I graduated. Wait, where was it? At? Huh? It's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay, but y'all's cold, right? Yeah, no, yeah. They they, they, the, they the best Division two team. They in they the best. Them in oh, Northwest no, the Missouri. Homie Smitty. Okay, the homie Smitty. Where did he I, go? He went to uh, was it Tiffin? Tiffin in Ohio. It's in Ohio. Yeah, but he was telling. But I, 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 I don't, he always talks about them. So I. He always talks about Grand there. Valley. Yeah. Okay, I, so Grand Valley is like the top D two school yeah, in the yeah, country. Yeah. Y'all, 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 look. He got. It's a like a D one double A. Yeah, like yeah. it's like how Montana is. Yeah. Like how the they Fans get they get out. compact yeah. out. Like, like they they he came. He took the video. Yeah, their facility and all that. Like like Grand Valley State is like anybody who goes there. They like, but they don't really know about it on the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? I never really knew about it. And I start doing my research. 
Like they got guys in the league, they got guys there, they sending guys to the combine and uh took a trip out there and it was it was it was beautiful man and i came out there in like april and i, I had no idea what was going to hit me in the in the winter so yeah man i i uh i ended up at grand valley state which was like the top d2 and after like taking my trip there or whatever the case may be i i figured like this is somewhere i want to go and then on top of that d2 got a little different rules than d1 mm -hmm. so you know leaving leaving juco you'll have probably most people have two years to go you know back mm -hmm. to a four year and do their thing but being that it's D2, I had three years. So it was like, damn, I low key get an extra year yeah. of disability. So it was a no brainer. But um, so I, I went there in January of 2015. Like, I, man, I, I jumped off the plane. <laughs> I was probably in, like, you know, a little hoodie and some sweats. You know, it was kind of LA, what they call LA cold, yeah, like, you know, 60 yeah. some, 50 <laughs> some. Jump off the plane and, uh, I'm in Grand Rapids, and uh, one of the one of my teammates and his pops, who I was I was gonna room with, he was gonna be my roommate. They come pick me up, and uh, bro, it was like maybe 15 degrees. Really? Okay. <laughs> and I was like, what have I got myself into? And that was a Saturday. And you already there? Like you I'm already there. signed? Committed, I'm signed. I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm about to start school. Yeah. And that was a Saturday, so then Sunday come. When they picked me up, it was nighttime, so I can't really see everything, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So then Sunday come, and we go out, you know, we go to the grocery store, and he, like, you know, his pops is, like, taking care of me real cool, dude. Um, like, you know, you need to run to Walmart, get whatever you need for your room or whatnot. So then Monday comes, and then we get some more snow, and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm thinking, like, okay, well, well, we ain't got school today then, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, we been sure about to get school canceled tight. Like, my first day, like, cool, first day of school canceled. That's all right. Man, so my, my roommate Kirk, he's he like, hey, bro, you got to get up. Like, we got yeah. we got class. I'm like, we got class? It's snowing outside. He's like, man, I don't need nothing. Like, nothing. <laughs> I had no Timberlands. I had no snow. I didn't have nothing. So his pops um, had came by the house and gave me a jacket. He like, that little jacket you got on right there, that ain't going to cut it. Like, he gave me, a, I think it's a, a Carhartt, a really, really nice jacket mm -hmm. for, you know, the winter in Michigan or whatnot. So, um... So I ended up wearing that, and like my first week there, I was like, "Like this is serious. Like I gotta go to class. Not only do I gotta go to class, and we about to have spring ball about to start, but cold. it's cold." Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the reasons why I went there is uh, the academic guy who was really, really about academics. He really cared. His name is Dr. Damon Arnold. And he he lived in L.A. He's from Ohio. But he moved to L.A. and he was in L.A. from like 11 to like 18. So he did like, you know, the, like a crucial part of his life yeah. here in L.A. So, um, you know, we were just chopping up game and, and I, I, would, I would go holler at him about certain things. And not only I could talk to him about football, but I could talk to him about academics and about life right. and about stocks. And like he really does well. He, he's just a, a motivational speaker and he gets paid to do a whole bunch of things. And, and that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, yeah, so I'm at Grand Valley State. We start spring ball, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm to the point to where like they got me playing both sides of the ball, like corner every season. They're like, we don't know where we want to put you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it's all it's all love, and um, I get a concussion maybe like the first, maybe like the first week in spring ball. I get a concussion, mm -hmm. so like I go to the trainers and they like they clear me in like two days. You feel me? But I prior, I had already had concussions at ASU, and I had one in JUCO at Mount Sac. So I had two at ASU playing football. Then I got one in a car accident. Mm. Then I got one in JUCO. So that leave me at four. And then I got one when I got to, I got two when I got to Grand Valley State. But at the time, I got one. So when I get this first concussion, I'm at five concussions that mm. I know about. We ain't had no trainer in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't had no athletic trainer. I have one that I know about, but I know for a fact that I've had more than one. Exactly, yeah. for a fact. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So that's five that I know about. So I get one, I go out for a little bit, they return me, and then I get, uh, I play in a spring game or whatever, and uh, I had hit my head, and I kind of felt like it was a concussion, but I didn't go see the trainers or nothing because I was going home the next day. So I went home, and I was, I was sitting at home with my friend, Cammie, and uh, I'm like, man, my head really hurts. And she's like, you want me to take you to the hospital? And she took me to uh, Verdugo Hills, USC. And uh, they was like, you got a concussion. So that made it six. So um, the doctor, you know, asked me questions. Like, well, how many of these have you had before? And have you ever blacked out? And how's your memory? Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, you need to go holler at a neurologist. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't tell nobody about this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I literally kept it like 
to myself. So, because if it you was something, scared, huh? yeah, and if it was something that I was gonna do, I wanted to make sure I was gonna do it. I wasn't listening to Nate, yeah, to John, yeah. to Parker, to whoever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, well, if I'm about to figure out if I want to play football or not, I'm gonna let this decision be solely on me. Mm-hmm. So I went to a couple of neurologists and whatever, and uh, they basically just told me like, man, like you really at risk of like. Like, not right now, you're not going to see it, but when you get 40, yeah. it can be bad for you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, like, potential, potentially, like, the worst, like, the best is I can get another concussion and then I might have CT or whatever the case may be. And then, like, the worst is, like, you can get paralyzed, you know what I'm saying? You get dementia, that all that shit. Thing? What's the, what's the, uh, the contact syndrome where, like, if you got a concussion, you get hit again, you get down impact? Yeah, down on impact. I forgot the, the exact name of it. That's what I was going to mention next. Mm-hmm. But, like, you could die on impact because I had so many concussions. So, mind you, I told you, I wanted to be a sports agent. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> like, really I'm care. Cool. Like, I to, so, I'm, now, like, I, I'm cool. So, um, Coach Mitchell, who's still the head coach at Grand Valley, you know, really cool guy. He he was, um, he was like, uh, he was really, really, he, he he's well-respected around there. And I respect him. And he gave me an opportunity to continue playing football. Mm-hmm. I mean, continue my education without playing football. He's like, look. I know what you done been through, but I know you came from California to Michigan. We don't really even get recruits to go like that. Like, you yeah. showed me that like, you were solid, so this how I'm going to do. But, you know, you still just got to abide by the rules, show up to the facility. You know, I'm going to have you do, you know, whatever I feel like need to be done for, yeah. like, a couple hours a week, which is nothing. And uh, I'm going to keep you on Scotty as long as you take care of your grades. So I was blessed. So um, I ended up double majoring there um, in sports management and physical education. And uh, what, what, what inspired you to get a double major? I got done playing football. I had more time oh, yeah, on my time. hands. Okay. So I had more time on my hands. So uh, although I was still involved, like behind the scenes with the equipment team and stuff like that, uh, I was just like, man, I got I got some time on my hands. And and Dr. Damon Arnold kind of was like, well, these are the only really nice, like maybe five or six classes that differ, differentiate yeah, the, the, the two majors. Too, yeah. So he was like, you might as well. Yeah. Like he gonna pay for them, you might thing. as well. Same thing. You know, double up. Like like Nip say, double, double up. up. <laughs> so uh, so I doubled up, and uh, I had already had my associates. So me, just me having the, the two majors, it was the double major. It was like. It was cool, so mm-hmm. I did that, and um, again, that shit, I know it made you feel good. Man, it made me feel good, but it's crazy because I don't like graduations. Like I really don't yeah. like graduations, so I was really thinking about uh, not going to my graduation, not participating, like just coming home. <laughs> my mom thing. was not <laughs> having it. Same like, thing, what? Cause, like, cause like, cause when you look at it, like, be real. How hard would you say it was to get those two degrees? Mm, it wasn't no, easy. No, it wasn't easy at all. Mm-hmm. Coming from the journey, it was like. No, I'm talking about when you in the heat, like when you was in college taking those classes. Like, were those classes that hard? No, they like, weren't. They no. weren't hard. No, no. and that's weren't. why when I got to my end, I'm like, I'm trying to go home. Like, yeah, I, I know I, I'm I was, just a college this, but yeah, like, I'm like, I gotta do for the family, man. Yeah, because I was like, it wasn't nothing. To do it wasn't this. nothing. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It wasn't. It wasn't hard. The journey was hard, yeah, but as yeah. far as like, okay, you sit down and take this class, that wasn't hard yeah, at all. Yeah. So I actually ended up being a better student GPA wise in college than I was in high school, mm-hmm. Same which is crazy because like most people, you'd think like, because I used to always ask Mr. Rustin like, is college hard? Like, as hard as you mm-hmm. you make it. Exactly. As hard as you, he's like, it's it's different things, but he's like. The only difference is, is like, I have a paper due in high school, and I'm like, damn, I didn't do it. And he'd be like, I'll give you an extension, and, and you can turn it yeah. in. But like, he like, college, they ain't going to do that. Yeah. You so missed that. You, you missed that. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> missed that. And he was like, some professors is going to, like, low-key hold a grudge against you because you're an athlete. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah, I double major. Um, so, sports management, and you said physical education. Physical education, okay. yes, sir. So then um, I got done with that, and I was going to initially go into a master's program at the University of South Florida, but um, it was like, so they got they got a dual master's program, so I went, I went on a recruitment weekend, they invited me down there, I went, and I, they, I, blew, like, I blew everybody out the water, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, as far as like, one-on-one, like I told you, I'm adaptable, you put me in a room, mm-hmm. I'm good, you know what I'm saying, so they was like, you are number one candidate, and whatnot, so um, they gave me a set of prereqs to take, because it's a dual um, dual master's program. So your first year you get an MBA, mm-hmm. a master's of business administration, 
in your second year, you get a master, uh, a sports, master of Science in Sports Management. So essentially, you got to be accepted kind of like low-key into both programs. You feel me? The mm -hmm. business and the sports management. Okay, yeah. So they gave me prereqs to take to get into the business, and I got to take the GRE and all that. And I was just like, I felt like that was just so dumb. Mm -hmm. So I take the classes, right? Uh, it was like eight classes. I took like maybe six of them. I didn't have to have all of them done. But like literally on the paper, it's like if you get a B average, then you good. So I went, took those classes, got a B average, 3.0, took the GRE. I didn't score as high as I wanted to, but I still got a B average in those classes, and that's what y'all told me. So they, they came back to me and was like, uh, like, you got two options. You could take them classes again and get A's in them classes, mm -hmm. or you could take the GRE again. The GRE is like $200 standardized yeah. test, so it's not really set up for us you know what I'm yeah, saying? The win yeah. and it, it doesn't really test my real knowledge. Like, yeah. it's a, and I'm not really a good test taker anyway. So I sat back and I thought about Wait, it. I know about the GRE. And I was yeah. like, mm, nah, this ain't something that I really, really want to do. Like now, I'm not half stepping. So if it's something that I don't want to do, I'm not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that was I was like, I still want to get my master's, but that's not the direction I want to take. So um, I moved back home. Um, and I start working in uh, the foster care system, being a, a counselor for, for youth that's at risk, like foster, um, juveniles, you know, just got a juvenile hall or whatever the case may be, um, just rehabilitating them and getting them back into the world and they coming from similar situations to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the why they react to me the way that they do, because like you get some of these counselors who just get no respect. And yeah. I'm like, you know, you whoever you are from where you come from a privilege, like you're not really, you just here to do your job, like I really care. Like yeah. I'm picking the kids up on my day off. Like we're going to UCLA. My little cousin play at UCLA. Like we about to go to UCLA yeah, practice. Yeah, he see. like bring them all. You feel me? They stay and play and catch after them. Like I got kids telling me them going to a spring practice. And you just imagine how many spring practices you participated in. Yeah. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like this is the best day of my life. Like mm -hmm. I've never done. Like I just took them to a, a spring practice and bought them some Little Caesars. You mm -hmm. feel me? Five dollar pizza. And they like, man, it's the best day of my life. Yeah. Like I got to. Play football and that college. goes back to even when I was saying about how you see, uh, you know, your your, your ten year plan was like, let me just stay out of jail. You yeah, know, they see that now they can put that's a, that's a seed that's put into their head. Yes. Like, man, I want to be at UCLA. I want to be there. You know, yeah. like so that's like, a goal for my like really behind the scenes. And then I remember one of the kids was um, he was like it was kind of hot and he was in the shade a little bit by the weight room and I was kind of calling him to come over there like. Like, like, come over here. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, you by the weight room. We supposed to be out on the field. Like, you kind of overstepping your boundaries, whatnot. And he goes, he says, no, Mr. Kelly told me I'm good. And I'm like, huh? He's <laughs> like, no, Mr. Kelly told me I could sit here and I could be here as long as I want and I could come back whenever I want to. So then I walk over there to him. I'm like, like, what are you talking about? And then Chip Kelly was right there. And he was like, oh no, like he's fine. He can sit here. Like he's good. So I was just like, <laughs> and that's like something he'll remember it's forever. Chip you Kelly, know what I'm saying? Man. They got, they got little <laughs> neck bands and and little, uh, you know. That say they names on it and stuff that they hung up in their room and it was mm -hmm. just like man just off something like a spring like I go to a ton of spring practices yeah. kick back and watch my my cousin play and stuff like that so uh, so yeah so that's what I that's what I still do now um, but uh, now I took it to where I'm not working a full time schedule because I got some stuff I want to do with motivational speaking and my nonprofit yeah, we love yeah, you and uh, so to the point to where I kind of make my own schedule now so um, I'm still getting my forty in I just kind of okay i want to work this hours these days or this hour these days so it's still cool but um so yeah man so i went through all of that to to doing what i'm doing today and my one of my goals like one of my uh i don't want i don't want to say like my side goal it was like it wasn't my main goal but uh i forgot the word i'm trying to use here but anyway one of my future goals was to open up a group home for kids for for young males really particularly for males and, and teach them the game of, you know, the real importance of minorities getting your education and going to school and figuring out, you know, what you want to do. You may not want to go to college, but you may want to be a plumber. Mm -hmm. Like, you may want to be a doctor. You may want to mm -hmm. be, like, really sitting down, breaking up game, and then letting them utilize their resources to get to where they want to go. Because not everybody want to be a football player. Yeah. But in our culture, that's what's, that's, that's what's glorified. That's what, that's what, you know, that you, they glorify that, like. 
like this dude just became a lawyer or you know just became a doctor and mm-hmm. like he not gonna get that many retweets. And he making just as much money. Yeah, like, you, you know what I'm saying. Too, but he not he not gonna get that many retweets. Yeah, he not gonna, he gonna get, get that like that. you know yeah. what I'm saying. They gonna they gonna retweet whoever you know catching bombs or mm-hmm. you know scoring touchdowns and that's okay. You know if that's what you like, that's okay. But at the same time, I feel like he's no less. I mean, the child that's a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, or I want to be a plumber or electrician, like, that. they're still a professional. Yeah. So I still would, like, I'm celebrating that. Yeah. Like, yeah. you did what you wanted to do. Like, I'm set. Like, my, my draft is, like, when I pass that test to become an agent, I'm probably going to cry because I know yeah. that's what I really wanted to do. Like, I set it in stone and I'm headed there. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm in a master's program right now, doing it online, 100% online, and I just got done with my first class uh, two days ago, and I got an A in it. So it's just the fact of just getting it done and doing it, man. And um, like I said, like I, don't, I ain't really out here trying to let everybody know what I'm doing and when I'm, I'm kind of yeah. moving in silence, yeah. but you know, slowly cre- right. creeping and progressing towards my goals. So what's the, uh, what's the, uh, hold on, let me go back. Cause I had a question about the, the foster care. Uh-huh. Gosh, what was I about to ask you? What did you just say before you, before you transitioned back to your master's program that you in? Damn, Madison. I'll come back. He'll the come group back. home? Okay. Uh, it was about the group home, but I forgot I was going to ask you something specific. Um, damn, I'm really mad I forgot that question. But anyway, oh well. Next time. I'll come back. It'll, it'll, it'll come to my head in a second. But So what's the process of you becoming an agent? What's that process look like? Uh, so in order to be an agent, you have to, of course, have your bachelor's degree. And now you got to have a master's. Okay. Uh, you just got to have a master's. It's no, not saying what you got to what you got to have a master's in. Um, obviously, the older agents, they're kind of grandfathered in through the old CBA, mm-hmm. which is the collective bargain agreement, which we were talking about earlier, which is crazy. Um, so you got to have you got to have uh, a bachelor's. You got to get your master's. Most people do it in like sports law, sports business or get an MBA, master of business, uh, business administration. And then you got to take a test. You take a test and you pay a fee and you pass it and then boom you good you got to kind of so is it is it true that you had to get your law degree or you had to set no, up a law no okay what, that's what, not where that's not true that from? that's a lot, a lot of people put that out there but that's, that that's not true you need, a, you need a, i'm I, i'm 100 percent confirmed with the nfl pa that all you need is a master's okay. degree and yeah. so what's your what is your thought process like like are you planning on getting this and trying to represent your people that you already know how to around you or are you trying to get in with another company like what's your process for that? um i plan on just getting in and representing the people that's around me so my uncle has a training company titled the pro way and i work with him with that and we we got some really really talented high school kids it's a seven on seven team and we travel or you know around the country and we, we play a, a high level of seven on seven. And every year, you gotta think, every year the pro is sending at least, out of all of our chapters, cause we, we go from Bakersfield to Orange County to, okay, you know what I'm saying? We everywhere, to the Valley, Pasadena. Like we're sending at least like maybe 15 to 20 kids a year to, to D1 colleges, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When they get there, they gonna have some friends that's going, you know what I'm saying? So just by word of mouth, I'm like, I might as well, yeah, you know, yeah. as well. I might as well. I might as well be the pro A agent. Mm-hmm. You know, it's right here for us. Like we are gonna be training kids for a long time until they stop. Mm-hmm. Like what we do, it works. Well, the programs that we got, the implements, the connections that we got. Like I said, my uncle, he played in the NFL, mm-hmm. so he got connections within that, that within himself. And it's it's crazy because it's like when you got kids that really take care of business, that got D one film, got D one size and D one oh, grade. I see, mm-hmm. I see my uncle make a call like, hey y'all, I got the safety. You know what I'm saying? A sophomore going into a junior year. He on the phone with a coach at Nebraska. And he like, you know, I think he good. He like, I'm about to go into a training session with my nephew. But when I get out, let me know what you, you know, think. I'm about to send you his huddle link. My uncle shot over in the text message his huddle link. We went to train kid for about an hour and a half. Got back in the car. He, coach said, I like what I see. Called me. That's what the coach told my uncle. My uncle called him and he like, yeah, I want to offer that kid. Okay. And it was that fast that yeah. kid had an offer from Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> which is like. Nebraska's not super like it's not okay. Clemson, it's not Bama, but that's still a pat like a national it. brand. That's mm-hmm. a powerhouse. You feel me? Yeah. It's Nebraska football. So um, I'm like, with us doing that and sending these kids to college, like, why not me? Why would we go to somebody else to represent us? And it's not oh, enough. Of, it's not enough of us yeah. representing us. It's not enough. Now, black now I was at, cause I got to do. I got one of my close friends. Uh, I mean, he actually older than me, but he like a mentor, low key to me. But he he just got into the game. Okay, you know? so I'm a. I'm gonna link you with him just to pick his knowledge because he, he was working at it for a while for the past four or five years and he yeah. finally got into the game and so he's really representing dudes now. Yeah. And I, I watched his journey, you know what I'm saying? And and 
it's good that he actually doing this. I'm gonna link with you. I'm gonna yeah. let y'all meet and stuff. So for y'all sure, for cause... sure. I, I can I can use all the resources I can. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So where can these people find you? Where can they get in touch with you? Where can they learn more from you? you uh, know, like, kids want to reach out to you. Where can they find Carl? Man? They can find know. me uh, on the on the. I got a Instagram pro <laughs> pro way training nine. Um, at Twitter, he's Carl Holmes. Um, like I said on Instagram, Pro A Training Nine, the Pro A Training page. You could come come find me there. Um, I'm about to start up this uh, this motivational speaking, and uh, with that, yeah, we got to connect with that most definitely. So when I when I when I branch out with that, they're gonna be able to uh, be able to see everything come full circle. But yeah, Pro A Training Nine on Instagram. He's Carl Holmes on Twitter. Uh, the Pro A Training on Instagram. They can come find us and see what we do. Um, so that's 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 pretty much that's pretty much how you find me and you know my uncle and my family and what we do. So yeah, well, I appreciate you, man. I know, uh, like I said, the story that you got is absolutely just yeah. crazy, dude. That's crazy. And, and this, like I said, this is why I do because I know that I was so privileged in life mm-hmm. and there's dudes like you, dudes in these inner cities, the dudes you working with in the foster care yeah. don't have the same opportunities that I did, um, and people just want to step on it while they down. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then well, there's definitely. people like you who make it out, which makes me it don't make me mad, but People use pe- people like you. Well, he made it out, and he had a bad situation. Yeah. So why can't everybody else make it out, yeah, man? You, not you're a king. You know what I'm saying? You like you did it. You yeah. know, so you should be committed, proud of yourself, man. I respect you, bro. You're yeah. a real nigga. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> respect. I appreciate that. I, I, I uh, like I said, I've been following you. We got mutual friends, so mm-hmm. I've been following what you're doing. And like I said, I tapped into the podcast, watched a couple of videos, and I'm like, hey, like this is something I want to do. And we got mutual friends, so like, why not connect? I don't even gotta go nowhere. I was like, if we yeah, gonna yeah, do like something together. We gonna blow up. So mm-hmm. I appreciate you just taking the time out of your day because we all busy. You know what I'm saying? Busy, like man. we all got stuff I'm to do. To get it. So I appreciate you having why me, not? man. And uh, bringing me over, man. Yes, I, I I need one of them. So I, I know you. you got one for me, man. Operation Capri Newman. Yeah, man. Appreciate it.